take 97, because all I ever get doing is I forget to hit record on that, turn the microphone on, driving me mental. Ah, should have left it alone. Welcome to Ted's Tiny Trucks. New look workshop, well, new look workshop. Everything's been moved around 90 degrees. I've been down to Ikea. I bought more Billy bookcases. I have more storage space in my tiny trucks. I've also run out of room for tiny truck storage already, hence the shelf and the, and the Tomahawk buggy at the top. But things are good. We've got a bit more room, finished truck, trailer, and I've got more room for my MCA. So one of the things I was worried about when coming to build that was if I stick everything on the desk, and let's be honest, it's not gonna be small, it's essentially gonna take my entire desk up, which means I struggle to do anything else. At least if I've got this shelf here, I can keep the chassis on here, even if the box has to be stored somewhere else. But at least in progress stuff, in theory, should be okay. Unfortunately, having moved everything around, I seem to have generated a different echo in the room, which has been a pain. So I'm now having to run a separate microphone. And as I said at the beginning, man, I just, I keep forgetting to either turn that on or unmute it or set the record on this. It's just, you know, how hard is it? And the answer's too bloody hard for my tiny brain on a Sunday. Anyway. Here we are, the cross trailer is done, so what I'll do is I'll stick that on the desk, move a few things around uh, and we'll get a closer look at uh, how it came together. Okay, so the last time we saw the trailer it was all just in its raw state, uh, the shocks have been stripped, since now it's all been painted. So I started off by painting uh, an old Christmas card, Primer Grey mixing up various colours of blue Tamiya paint and figuring those around until I got what I thought was the right colour. I then sprayed the body panels up. So again, I've used the hairspray weathering technique on this. So body wise, it was primed, painted light grey, hairsprayed, custom mix of blue sprayed over the top. And then I went over everything again with a short bristle brush and took a lot of the paint off uh, and just revealed all the wear marks in it. I then weathered the thing down with weathering powders and shot it all with Tester's dull coat. Shooting it with Tester's dull coat has unfortunately darkened the paint scheme down. So although it looks quite grey and quite dark in this, I'll flash a photograph up now of what it looks like in, in daylight. So if it is blur in daylight, it's still not as blue as I would have liked. Now that's my fault for not shooting my test card in the same, in the same uh, varnish as I used on the model. I don't mind too much because I, you know, the idea was that the trailer would look older and slightly more worn than the truck will. Uh, so I've got another opportunity just to tweak the colour balance a bit uh, and and see if I can see if I can improve it, give it a bit more, keep it a bit more blue, I should say, and le uh, and a bit less wear. Wheels and chassis wise, well, they were sent, they were left black, and then I just shot them with a, a weathered black uh, from Vallejo Air with a little bit of brown and a little bit of grey over the top just to stop the the new clean look and the interior wood was actually just painted with acrylics so it was a mainly a, a light grey a dark grey or mid grey really uh, and a beige blended in uh, and weathered together to give you different tonal variation and then I just went over the top slightly with uh, brown pastel again and then the whole truck's been uh, matte varnished like I said testers del coat on the on the outside faces and then Halford's uh, enamel underneath to try and give us a, uh, give it a bit more durability. It is essentially done now. The only thing left is the lights for the back end. But because I don't know how much lead length I need to leave at the at this end to plug into the what would be the you know the tone hitch in the electric socket on the back of the MC8, I've decided to leave that off. The only thing I have done is I've painted around the outside of the light housings in matte black and I've painted actually inside the, the lenses themselves to try and cut down on the amount of glow that you get back off the off the LED lights. It's one of the things that annoys me when you see something driving away from you and you can see the back of the headlamps through the inner wheel arches. Just, yeah. It's a bit like having indicators on every time you turn left or right in a truck. It's just one of those little things that you try so hard to catch realism and everything else and then you absolutely annihilate it at the last minute with just unrealistic lights. It'd almost be better off in those regards having no lights, I think. 
Problem wise, oh, there wasn't really much to worry about. The only thing that was entertaining was all the bolts that go down the side. You know, the piece call out on the instructions says it's M2.5 by 6. The, the, the drawing shows everything down as being you know, M2.5 by 12. The reality is you want 6 in some places, 12 in others. And actually through here I've nut and bolted on the back um, just because I wasn't happy just screwing into the plastic. I'd already on the trailer on the main bed itself the holes for these bolts were actually already two and a half mil in diameter so there was no chance you were going to get any, going to get any bite of the bolts in there. So basically I put everything together and then when it was in this painted state everything finally aligned I then just drilled through and did all the mounting holes at the front and through the sides there. I would like to have put a tarpaulin on it, I've got to be honest, but the bed is, slight, is a different length to the MCA, in fact it's slightly longer, so if it had been slightly shorter we probably could have got away with stretching the same, uh, the same rear deck over it, same rear canvas, but I can't do it on this, so I think it will probably well, it'll spend its life either open or no sides, but I have to say I'm getting quite drawn to it having sides to it, I think it will, it will look great behind the MCA. You know, suspension wise, well, it's not too bad at the front, I have to say. The back, you know, you've got the classic, the shocks are very sticky on the initial approach. I mean, you've got, you know, I mean, despite I put a little bit of oil in them to get over the o-ring stickiness, but it doesn't really seem to have done the job enough. We'll have to play that one by ear, actually, and see how it goes in the field. I suspect it would just be one of those where you just, before you set off in the truck, you just have to bounce it a few times and just free everything off. Given that the shocks look to be exactly the same as what's on the MCA, I think that's just something you have to do on the rig then. Not too difficult to paint, just you need a bit of space to store everything because it's all so long. But other than that, yeah, great model. Okay, I think that brings us to an end. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.